Hello there everyone and welcome to another edition of Lydia's Crafty Corner with me Lydia in my little crafty corner. So today I'm going to be sharing with you these cards and it uses a oldie but a goodie technique and we're going to be using our acrylic blocks to create these fabulous watercolour backgrounds here with some watercolour markers. You can use inks but I do find that the markers work really well too. So to start with I am going to be using a piece of watercolour cardstock. This is four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm going to be using my acrylic block. Now this one does have the etched lines in it so I'm going to be using the smooth side. If we did use the etched line side you would kind of get more of a checkerboard pattern on there. So the, for the first one I'm going to be using sunkissed, turquoise and a little bit of purple wine. So I chose these colours. They don't necessarily work together. Now the purple and the yellow wouldn't, when they mix they would create kind of a muddy colour but in this one it really didn't. I was really kind of um, expecting it would but I do love the effect because orange and purple don't normally mix together very well. That's why I've kind of left so much of a separation there. Once I've added the colours to my block, I'm just going to take a little bit of a mini mister. As you can see, I'm holding my hand up like a kind of a shield so it doesn't go on the paper. Then once I have that, I'm going to quickly turn it over and then I'm going to pop it into place onto my card. So as you can see, the colours are mixing a little, but I'm going to leave it like that and I'm going to wonder how it's going to turn out and I did like it in the end. So for the next one, I'm using some lime turquoise and then some of the midnight violet. So as, as you can see, I'm just going to do it exactly the same as before. I'm taking the marker and I'm just adding some ink to my acrylic block. Again, you could use little mini ink cubes if you wanted to, just smush them onto your acrylic block and you're going to get ink out that way as well. Our inks are watercolour based so you are able to add water to them and they will mix and blend with each other that way. So again as I've added my colour down I'm adding my little hand shield into place and I'm then going to add some water to it just using a little mini mister. You don't want to add too much, you don't want it too wet just to make sure that that waters them colors do mix around now for this one i did remove the block really quickly so it's added a really cool effect there for this one i've had kept the same colors on before because i had lots of ink left over i'm just going to remist that with my little mini mister and then pop that into place it's going to give me a really subtle effect for this one but i did love how it turned out that green at the bottom i did take a little bit of tissue just to remove some of it but i did leave some of it there as well so how could I not create a watercolour one? So I'm using Rubelite, Autumn Blaze, Warm Sunshine, Lime, Turquoise and some Midnight Violet for this one. You can use whatever colours you wanted but I do love a little bit of a rainbow and this is the way that I'm going to go. As you can see, because they are in pen form, I can add really small strips of colour. If you are using your ink blocks or your ink cubes, it is a little bit more difficult to get more of a colour selection onto one acrylic block, unless you're using the large acrylic block, which you could do as well. So I've added all of my inks onto my little acrylic block. Again, a little hand shield in place to stop some splatter of creating on my card mist your acrylic block and the inks just so they do move and then pop it into place so you're going to quickly turn this round and then pop it onto your card this one is going to be really quite light so i have chose the beautiful rouge the mid the mountain mist sorry and also the citrus burst for this one i do find that this one was a little bit too light so maybe i needed to add a little bit more ink while i was doing it or you could just go for dark colours, it's completely up to you. But if you are after more of a subtle look, using lighter colours do, does work as well. And I do love the effect of these watercolour backgrounds. They're very easy to do and it gives you a great look of watercolour. Maybe something that it makes you look like you've taken a little bit longer than you actually have. <laughs> so I'm just going to add that into place. As you can see, the rouge is a lot darker than the rest of the colours. But I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to kind of colour and disguise some of the pieces that I don't necessarily like later on. 
So here are all my dried watercolor panels and I do love how these turned out. They're very, very cool. I'm gonna be using a study in watercolor set for some of these. And as you can see, there was a little bit of a splodge on there that I didn't particularly like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stamp over this. So I'm kind of disguising the parts that I don't like with my stamped images. So I've taken the large floral element from the water, study in watercolor and I've stamped that a number of times using the permanent black ink. I'm then going to be using the Weekend Doodles set as well. So I'm just going to pop this into place on my next panel. Again, I'm going to ink that up using the Permanent Black. You could use Obsidian if you wanted to, but I didn't have it at the time. So I am using my Permanent Black for this one. So as you can see, I've moved on to the next one. This is the one that we used with the second generation ink that was left on the acrylic block from the first inking. And I'm just using this little element again from Weekend Doodles just to kind of place around in my panel. And again, I'm inking this up using the permanent black. If I did have it, I would have used the Obsidian because it is an amazing ink and it has quickly become my favorite go-to ink already. So I'm just gonna pop this into place. So I kind of have it all within that little panel that we did use the watercolor on to. So I'm just gonna pop that into place and then I'm gonna move on to the next one. Again, for my little rainbow effect one here, I'm gonna be using the water um, weekend doodles, sorry. Again, I'm using the permanent black ink. I'm just gonna ink that up and stamp it into place. If you do find that it doesn't stamp as well as you want it to, you can just go over it again. As you can see, I did have a splodge there <laughs> and I didn't quite like it. So again, I've grabbed the watercolor, a studium watercolor set because these are nice bold images and they can hide a multitude of, multitude of sins if you want them to. So I'm just gonna keep stamping away with these. And I did add a couple of the elements from the set for that one. Once I've done all the stamping onto my panels, I then decided to have a little play around with two of the panels. So the ones that I did with the weekend doodles, I decided to make the lighter panel darker and then the darker panel lighter. So for the one that I've used with the lighter panel, I've just added the same inks that I used for the panel. So the lime, the turquoise and the midnight violet. And I've just squoze a little bit of the ink out of the pens. I've just added it onto my acrylic block. So it's serving a double purpose today. And I'm just gonna color in some of, the, well, all of the images using these colors. So I'm kind of mixing and matching them together. You can mix these colors. They work really, really well when you do mix them. So you can create loads of different shades with just a couple of pens. So even if you did just have one set, you can create lots of different shades, different tones and different colors just using that one set. So they are very easy to use in that way. So like I said before, I'm now gonna make the darker panel lighter. So all I'm doing is I'm taking some clean, clear water and going over the places where I want the images to be lighter. Because this is still water reactive, you can add water down and take a dry tissue and pull the ink and the water away from the image. So this is gonna give you kind of a bleaching effect to your images. I think it's very, very pretty. It is very subtle as well. So um, a lot of the dark color may not move as much as you want to, but I did love the effect in the end. So here are all my cards completed. All I've done is I've added a couple of sentiments from the two stamp sets that I've been using and some of the enamel dots from the green fields enamel dot set. So for this one, I've just finished it off with a sentiment from the Weekend Doodle set with the black enamel dots there. And then I have finished this one off with a beautiful sentiment again from the Weekend Doodles. And this time I've mixed and matched a couple of the enamel dots just to play with the colors that are here. So these ones are from the Our Family collection. Again, I've used the Our Family collection enamel dots on this one. And I've just used another sentiment from the Weekend Doodles. And I do love how these worked out here. I love that there's a the darker color behind the, above the lighter background on this one and then vice versa on the one before it. This one is the beautiful rainbow one and I've used acrylic dots, enamel dots even, from different sets to create a little bit of interest on here. Just I just love how it worked out. 
And then last but not least, we have the really light one that we created last. And I've again, I've just a simple sentiment and some jet black enamel dots finishes this one off perfectly. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I really do hope that you've enjoyed the video and that you like the technique and that you do give it a go. It's always good to go back on an oldie goodie technique and create something new and fresh and different. Again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again really, really soon. Bye-bye.